Greetings, brothers and sisters. Really weird day today. Bunch of weird stuff on my other YouTube channel, on my uh, Apocalypse Now channel with um, Hollywood celebrities dropping like flies. Things just, things just seem to be getting weirder and weirder. And um, people are commenting that, you know, things just, I mean, everyone kind of sees it. And I want to talk about that in terms of one possible explanation as we go through this. But I woke up this morning and the first thing I saw was Alec P. Baldwin has now done a 90-minute interview with CNN that's yet to air, but the damage has already happened, right? <laughs> and I thought that would be the lead story here. Um, and I don't always lead with whatever, but I thought I would cover that first. But then one of my viewers sent me this. So this is William J. Smith. And so here he is pointing to a dude on their happy days, laughing, you know, he is doing whatever he's doing there. And then here he is in Jada, the night of the Oscars, getting ready to go to the Oscars, where he's already going to win an Oscar for a film that lost $25 million and barely anybody watched. And then he kind of disappeared for a while. And then he wrote uh, an apology for his violent behavior. And then he um, came out and talked about... Um, you know, he apologized to Chris Rock. And then, um, and so this is his next post that came today. Me trying to get back on social media. So what we see there is a baby gorilla, possibly at the zoo, trying to pick something off a silverback gorilla's butt like a tick and eat it. So he's, he's saying that he's this guy here. He's the dude. He's the dude who's trying to, he's comparing his being on social media to eating something out of a gorilla's butt. <laughs> I mean, like, this is what he's saying, that he really desperately wants to eat something out of a gorilla's butt, which means a metaphor for going back on social media. And the gorilla, bigger gorilla, silverback gorilla, doesn't want to let him do that. Um... And what are you doing here, Will? Like, <laughs> this is, you're obviously not thinking through, you're obviously just not posting stuff on social media willy nilly. And it says here, like Nike, bro, just do it. Welcome back. Welcome back. Bro, ha 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 ha. Dwayne Martin liked it. Dwayne Martin, isn't that the guy who, I think Dwayne Martin is the guy that he was rumored. To have a um, a long lasting relationship with wasn't he's a free agent too. Um, Dwayne Martin is also a free agent, like Chris Cuomo's, and there he is with Draymond Green. But he, um, I think Dwayne Martin and Will Smith. All right, so this is um, Will Smith and Dwayne Martin. And there are numerous rumors of them having an affair. This is something they've talked about in Hollywood, the truth behind Dwayne Martin and Will Smith's bromance. It started with Tisha Campbell. You remember her from, um, she's, uh, she's in that um, show with, um, he's been in no, no, multiple shows. You remember her from. Um, whatever that show with Martin Lawrence was, the truth always comes out in the end, no matter how hard anyone tries to handle it. Lies are just a temporary delay to the inevitable. So she was married to this guy, Dwayne Martin. And so this is in numerous places. This is talked about their relationship. So people were asking her whether they were in a gay relationship. And then she posted that, um, Instagram post. And then the bigger thing here was um, Kevin Klein, and I've read this before. We were all sitting in Will's tra trailer on the Wild Wild West set. It was crazy. Will said, I'm secure about with my manhood. And he walked over to Dwayne Martin and kissed him on the mouth. And so that's Dwayne Martin. So he put a smiley face there. Um, and so... You know, 
I'm offering my services here. I think Will Smith and Alec Baldwin and others could benefit from my services. Before you post something like this on social media, you could pay me $10,000 and I will make a personal video that no one else will see in which I will say the mockery things that I say here and then you can make the decision whether it's worth it to post this video or not, right? Before Alec Baldwin does another interview or, you know, post something on Instagram or any of these people, right? I could be of great service because they obviously don't understand how the internet works and how people are going to react to it. And I am, you know, good at this kind of thing. And I think my video would dissuade you from posting something like this. I don't know. Maybe it's me or maybe they're just, you don't even have control over this. This is your handlers just humiliating you. I don't know. But let me just recap what is being said here. Will Smith is saying he desperately wants to get back up on the internet, but he's not able to do so. Social media. And his metaphor is a small gorilla, baby gorilla, who's picking something out of a silverback gorilla's ass. <laughs> and the silverback gorilla represents the cancel culture and everybody else that's somehow preventing Will Smith from picking out of its ass, the ass of social media, <laughs> and getting on the internet. And he thought this was a wise choice. Hence, my services, right? Because, you know... Maybe hearing something like I've just said here would um, dissuade you from making these bad decisions. You don't need to be on social media. Like why, you know, he's made, I think, over hundreds of millions of dollars. I don't know how much he's made. You know, he's worth lots of money. And he was the number one movie star for a bit. He's had a successful rap career, and he sucked at both acting and rapping. And so he had a good run, right? He's still doing work. He still has some, you know, maybe, I don't know. I mean, they both got canceled. Will for the slap and Alec Baldwin for the shot and his wife and her, you know, fake accent. But all these things could have been avoidable had they just reached out and said, make a video on something I've done. And if I can see it through your eyes, I probably wouldn't post it. <laughs> and so, again, only $10,000 would save you so much in the in the long term. Um just, you know, just saying. Alec Baldwin lashes out at Rust Armorer and Assistant Director. Now, I have some clips from the video. I'll cover the whole video at some point, the whole interview when it comes out. And then on People Magazine, Alec Baldwin said he has been fired from acting jobs over Rust shooting fallout. Nearly 10 months after a fatal shooting on the set of Rust, Baldwin said he has lost five jobs. <laughs> he had five jobs that he lost because of the shooting a co-worker. Like the craziness of this. When you are holding a gun and the gun fires a bullet and kills somebody you're working with and for some reason you lose future jobs, <laughs> five of them, like the craziness behind this, right? So these are the headlines that we've seen, right? Recently released FBI forensic report suggests a revolver handled by Alec Baldwin in the fatal shooting of cinematographer Hal Hutchins on the set of Rust would not have been discharged without its trigger being pulled while the gun was in a cocked position. Alec Baldwin claim refuted by FBI report on Rust film. And then there's all these headlines like this. FBI contradicts Alec Baldwin's claims in fatal Rust shooting. So that's how the media was covering it. And Alec Baldwin and Chris Cuomo's and now his lawyer and CNN are trying to help Alec say that the media is against him. The media is out to get him. Even friendly NPR, National Public Radio, where the rush shooting investigation stands as FBI refutes Alec Baldwin's story. I'll come back and read this in a moment. So here is some of the actual report According to this, whatever article it is, I don't know. I couldn't find the whole report and I hesitate to spend time. You know, I kind of almost have to at this point. But um, there's the stuff here. Alec Baldwin suggests he was fanning revolver during film shooting. Only one question is, 
who put a live run in, run round in the gun, right? And there's lawyers out there defending him. The um, and he's you know accusing the armorer and the assistant director, and saying Dave Halls. And I'll get into that. I'll show you the video. You'll see that. But here is the report, and it's not worded in a very understandable way, so it's causing uh, confusion. Hammer at rest, decot gun on a loaded chamber. With the hammer at rest on a loaded chamber, item two detonated a primer without a pull of a trigger where the hammer was struck directly. And so uh, when the hammer was at rest at a loaded chamber and the revolver and something hit the hammer, it went off, right? If they hit the hammer with the hammer, it would fire the bullet, right? <laughs> Which is what they used, apparently. They hit the hammer with the hammer. It says here, with a revolver in this design, when the hammer is at rest on a loaded chamber, the firing pin sits directly on the primer of the cartridge. When force is applied to the hammer, such as striking or dropping, it can fire the cartridge without a pull of the trigger. This is consistent with normal operation for a single action revolver. Well, that's, and that's not, that's irrelevant. With the hammer in the fourth and, and half cock positions, item two could not be made to fire without a pull of a trigger. When enough pressure was applied to the trigger, each of these safety positions were overcome and the hammer fell. And so if you hit the hammer while it was cocked, which Alex, Alec didn't do, right? With the hammer in the one-fourth cock position, pressure was applied to the trigger and the hammer fell. However, the firing pin did not have enough force to detonate the primer and resulted in a, a light firing pin strikes. And so within the fourth position, one fourth pulled back, right? It's not enough force to fire the gun. The same thing in the half cock position. It wasn't enough force to detonate the primer. So Alex's contention that he pulled the hammer back, he's going to say as far as he could, and without it locking, because if it locked, it wouldn't have fired, it wouldn't have detonated. Right, so the the, the one-fourth and half position, that wasn't enough. With the hammer in the full cocked position, item two could not be made to fire without a pull of the trigger while working internal components were intact and functional. During this testing portion of the trigger, sear and cylinder stock fractured while the hammer was struck. The fracture of these internal components allowed the hammer to fall in the firing pin and the detonated the primer. During this testing portions of the trigger sear and cylinder stopped fractured while the hammer was struck. That is, if somebody hit the hammer while it was cocked back. The fracture of these internal components allowed the hammer to fall and the firing pin to detonate the primer. This was only successful discharge during the testing. It was attributed to the fracture of the internal components, not the failure of the firearm or the safety mechanisms. So that's if they act if that's if they hit the hammer with a hammer, right? And so that didn't happen. And so none of these things support Alex's story of about fanning, right? Because to fan, you would have to pull the you would have to pull the hammer all the way back and hold the trigger down and the hammer would then release and then fire. It would only fire in a full position. And so that's what they said. The gun wouldn't fire in a half position or a fourth position. It only fired in a full position. And you could bypass the trigger if the hammer was struck in such a way to damage and, and push it past the, you know, the trigger mechanism that's holding the hammer from firing, right? Going back to the NPR story, it says here, the FBI recently finished and sent a report to the Santa Fe County Sheriff's Office which is handling the investigation. Officials found that the weapon, meant to be a prop, could not be fired without pulling the trigger. And so this is NPR, right? This is the, you know, the liberal-leaning public radio news, you know, like PBS. And so how are they going after Alec? Like Alec and his lawyer are complaining that the media is giving him bad coverage. So unlike other people in the truth community, I'm in the editing 
process, and I want to say this. Unlike most people, I'm not going to agree with the mainstream news or the FBI just because it screws Alex, right? Or Alec, right? I'm not going to say, oh, now I believe in the media and the FBI because they're saying something that makes me happy, right? That's very common. Most people do that. I don't do that. I, you know, I don't, not my own, you know, maybe it sounds like I do that, but, you know, I am just covering what the so-called official story says. I don't believe in the show. I don't believe any of this stuff. I don't believe, you know, I mean, I don't disbelieve either. I don't know. I don't know what's fake and what's real. It's just like watching a show. It's all an illusion. But in this illusion, Alec Baldwin's lawyer and Alec Baldwin are changing his story. He definitely lied during the ABC News report. He's been caught in several lies and things that just most people are not going to believe. And the, and the um, interview came off really poorly. And now he's doing damage control again, which is, you know, a mistake, right? Because <laughs> it's just going to make things worse. He never gets it. He never gets just to shut up and let the process play out. He just loves being in the spotlight. But the issue here is all these people complain about crazy conspiracy theorists saying, that the mainstream media is deceptive. And Trump, for example, saying the media is fake news. But then when it happens to them or something they believe in, they change their story, right? Like they want to legitimize the media when it agrees with them in their position. The liberal biased media, which is clearly liberal biased, as is social media, as is everything else. Like I just covered yesterday, how this blogger admitted that they rigged everything, the story with Hunter Biden, all those things, because they all were in agreement they couldn't let Trump get elected no matter what that meant. And then they came out saying Trump tried to, you know, the big lie, steal the election. And so this is the hypocrisy. And so Alec getting, getting it from the mainstream media, but he's saying that he, he still, his story still stands that the, the FBI report is being misinterpreted. And there's nothing that I saw so far that indicates that. And CNN is going to try to help him now. Like he made some kind of deal. They're going to try to help cover him, just like Chris Cuomo did. And it's sad and pathetic, right? The ballistic analysis also found that the weapon could not be made to fire without a pull of the trigger while the working internal components were intact and functional. And so... It's really whether the gun was in good shape or not, right? And so Gutierrez's lawyers, the, the woman who's the, um, the armorer, her lawyer said the newly released FBI report shows the revolver was in good working order and that Baldwin had to have pulled the trigger to fire the revolver, directly contradicting his prior statements. Now, I couldn't find anything where it was said that the revolver was in good working order, right? Now, we know from Alec Baldwin's statement here that his attorney said after the internal parts fractured, which caused the gun to go off in the cock position without pulling the trigger, well, that's not what it says in that article. It said that, you know, if uh, something hit the hammer or the internal components of the gun weren't functioning, but as far as I know, they found the gun to be in good working order. I don't know because they haven't, I haven't seen that part of the report. So then Alec, um, there was a report, a promo of his this show. And look, he copied it from his phone. Like it's available on YouTube TV where I got it and also YouTube in two different ways, in two different videos, but the same, basically the same um the same promo was covered on two different uh, time slots in CNN. So I'm going to show you the better quality one because Alec, like, you know, <laughs> he did this right here. Make good choices. Jacqueline Howard, thank you very much. So this morning, actor Alec Baldwin. So at the end of this segment, um, they're the first part of this segment, they're going to support one of Alec Baldwin's lawyer's bogus talking points, right? And so... Hannah Gutierrez's lawyer is saying the gun was in proper working order. 
And Alex Baldwin's lawyer is saying the gun failed internally, and that's what allowed it to fire without Alec having to pull the trigger. I believe Hannah Gutierrez's lawyer, right? <laughs> Based on everything that I see, you know, the, the thing here. But they're going to support that in a second. But you hear what they just said? So the first report was ending. The previous report was ending. And it was about making good dietary choices for your health. And then Berman goes, um, make good choices. And then they run a segue <laughs> into Alec Baldwin. So it's like they're saying, make good choices. And then they show you this guy, right? <laughs> they show you Alec Baldwin. Let's watch that again. Make good choices. Jacqueline Howard, thank you very much. So this morning, actor Alec Baldwin is speaking out to CNN amid new findings from the Rust investigation. Baldwin maintains he never pulled the trigger and explains why he was scared former President Trump put him in danger. CNN's Chloe Malas has more. Ten months in, okay. and confusion still persists over the sequence of events that led to a deadly shooting on the set of Rust. This week, an FBI report concluded this gun could not be fired without the trigger being pulled while the gun was cocked and eventually malfunctioned after internal parts fractured. That's not what happened. They didn't say that. Like now CNN is getting in on the, the Alec Baldwin lawyer talking points, right? That's why they're doing that here. This is what the report actually said. An accidental discharge test is conducted in all modes of fire for a particular firearm, utilizing the prime cartridge case or shot shell case. The firearm is struck with a rawhide or similar style mallet on its six plates, front muzzle, butt plate, top of the breech and chamber bottom trigger guard and frame, both sides of the receiver frame. If necessary, tests can be undertaken in order to attempt to duplicate the conditions under which the firearm was discharged. Well, that doesn't, none of those things happened, right? See, Alec didn't hit the gun with a mallet. And there was no, you know, issues with uh, the gun being hit in any way. Alec's story was he pulled the hammer back. It didn't cock. He didn't pull the trigger. And that was enough to make the gun discharge, to fire the gun. And we know that the FBI report says that's impossible. And this is what it said again. With the hammer in the full cock position, item two could not be made to fire without a pull of the trigger while the working internal components were intact and functional during this testing, portions of the trigger, sear, and cylinder stopped fracture while the hammer was struck. The fracture of these internal components allowed the hammer to fall and the firing pin and, the, and detonated the primer. This was the only successful discharge during the testing as a tribute to the fracture of internal components, not the failure of the firearm or the safety mechanisms. So that was with them applying pressure. And so what CNN just did is, you know, lied for Alec Baldwin. And then Alec Baldwin posts this thing on his Instagool. You know, the poor quality. I went and got the good quality so you could watch the better quality video. And the video has a lot of poor quality into in it. I'll show you that in a moment. I'll just show you the rest of the video. But this is what he posted on Instagool because CNN basically gave him cover. This is only a smattering of the 90-minute interview. A lot more details to come after the DNA announces their findings. The DA announces their findings. Um, like, what are you doing here, Alec? Like, you're just making things worse, bro. <laughs> Don't you know the longer you talk, like, five minutes is bad enough. But when you're talking for 90 minutes, you're going to incriminate yourself. I mean, just deposing himself again, right? Just really, really stupid. All right, so let's finish up the rest of the interview here. In his first interview with CNN, Alec Baldwin denies pulling the trigger. I never once said, never, that the gun went off in my hand automatically. I always said I pulled the hammer back, and I pulled it back as far as I could. So I've seen part of this interview in two different places, and they both have this grainy, looks like he has a blur filter on, you know, like, like he couldn't even get this at high def, right? And then him saying, the more important piece, him saying he pulled the hammer back as far as he could, which means that he is now trying to pitch this idea that the hammer never locked because the trigger was broken because the gun internally malfunctioned. But the way that the 
FBI po- report looks right now, and I haven't read all of it. I'm not going to, and I can't find it. They're just bits and pieces that are out there. That the internal mechanism was only broken after they broke it, right? And that was them banging the gun around, doing all kinds of things to the gun. But when they got the gun, it was in fine working order. And when we pulled the hammer back, it cocked because that's what they say happened. So that when Alec Baldwin pulled the hammer back, it cocked. And he should know as somebody who knows about guns that if he pulled the hammer all the way back, that's basically the same as as pulling the trigger if it doesn't lock. And whatever he was doing there, I don't know. Because he said he let go of the hammer and it didn't lock and it and it fired. But now he's saying he pulled it. I pulled it back as far as I could. And so that's how his story has changed to meet the FBI report and then go with this new narrative him and his lawyer have cooked up that there was a failure in the internal mechanism of the gun, i.e. that the hammer never locked. I never took a gun and pointed at somebody and clicked the ha- thing. Click with... I don't know what words to use today, but if they click with them... I never took a gun and pointed at somebody and clicked the thing. He never clicked the thing. He never pointed at it and clicked the thing. He doesn't click the thing. He's not a clicker. He doesn't click with. Come on. Stop thinking he's a clicker. While waiting for the results of the Santa Fe County Sheriff's Office investigation, Baldwin says he hired his own investigator. That private investigator, as you probably know, did not have a difficult time accessing the staff of the Sheriff's Department. And that person told us, quote unquote, we've known in the department since January that Alec would not be charged with a crime. Okay, so let's put this whole thing to rest now. I didn't know. You hired a private investigator and he talked to somebody. They had a private conversation in the Justice Department there in Santa Fe, and they're not going to charge you with a crime. They knew back in January. And so, good, thanks for telling us, Alec. We can forget all about this. No reason to do a whole 90-minute interview. Let's just end it there. <laughs> you clicked with... A sentiment echoed by his attorney. Do you think that there is a possibility, though, that he could face charges at all? It would be a huge miscarriage of justice. But the then president fanned flames against him. The former president of the United States said he probably shot her on purpose. To me, was really the only time I thought that that I needed that I was worried about what was going to happen, because here was Trump who instructed people to commit acts of violence, and he was pointing the finger at me and saying I was responsible for the death. I want to apologize. I'm sorry that Vladimir Putin has left with me again. No one has been charged for the tragedy on set, but Baldwin said there are two people responsible, armorer Hannah Gutierrez-Reed and assistant director Dave Halls. Through their attorneys, they accuse Baldwin of deflecting blame. But Baldwin points to the findings of an occupational safety report. Hannah Reed handed the gun to Halls and said, don't give it to Alec until I get back to the set. I've got to go do something else. And he proceeded to the set and A, handed me the gun. See, no one feels sorry for Alec Baldwin. Well, I'll cover this at the end, but this is why this is a fail. Because he's throwing these two people under the bus, right? People he hired to do his low-budget movie in a movie that, the movie set that was was deemed as not safe by the people working there. And people weren't getting paid and compensated for. And there was, like, threat of a strike, right? All under Alec's producership. Because... He did hold the gun and fire it, and he did produce and was in charge of these people, hiring these people and the budgetary aspects of it. So it's not just he's the guy holding the smoking gun. He's the guy who was in charge of the whole thing, right? He was a producer on the film. He was the biggest star as well. Baldwin said Gutierrez-Reed should have known the difference between dummy rounds, which make a rattling sound, and live ammunition. I mean, anybody on earth who works in that business can determine that. Well, how about an inexperienced 25-year-old that you got on the fly and the cheap? (laughs) Like, take some responsibility. You hired this person, right? You were, you know, in charge of this broke-ass movie. Baldwin raised questions about the supplier of guns and ammunition for the film, Seth Kenny, who is being sued by the armorer. An FBI report said 150 live rounds were found on set. What was the provenance of all the bullets on the set? Where did those come from? Well, according to the FBI report, as far as I'm aware, the bullets were commingled. 
Wait, so if that's the case, then who commingled them? I think you commingled the bullets, Alex, you perv. You commingler. I think the one who smelt it dealt it, Alec. I think you did it. I think you're the commingler. Did Seth Kenny provide her with prop ammunition where he commingled live rounds with blank rounds? Questions Baldwin says kept him up at night. Alec is tossing and turning in bed going, who commingled? Who commingled the bullets? I want to know who brought those big bullets onto the set and commingled them with blank rounds. Who's the commingler? He couldn't sleep. He's been asking this question over and over again. It's been torturing him. Poor Alec. As he replayed the final days of a talented friend and cinematographer. And she was great at her job and she died. And she died. And that's, that hurts me every day. You know, every day of my life I think about that. It's horrible. Oh, Jesus, Alec. Are you actually freaking crying here, bro? Come on. <laughs> there is absolutely no organic reason for you to cry here. This is complete acting and bad acting. You wouldn't be doing this if you were talking to your friends on the phone about this or your lawyer. And you've showed so much of being narcissistic and interested in your own self-preservation in this interview, in this report. Let's, why, let's let the report finish, and then I'll come back to this crying debacle here by Alec. So Baldwin also told me in this wide-ranging interview, it lasted almost two hours, that he tried to get the Rust film made even after Helena passed away because he wanted to ha have the proceeds go to the family, especially to her young son. He also told me that in the wake of this, while waiting for the DA to announce whether they are going to have any charges or not, um, he says that he's lost five jobs and that just yesterday he was fired from another project. And that this is the good old common sense reporting that I've learned to respect and love from CNN. Because here's a guy who was in charge at his last job and the biggest star at his last job. And he shot a co-worker at his last job. And she died. And now he can't get another job. <laughs> now other people don't want to hire him. It's just like this crazy thing. And CNN is right on top of it, right? Like they're going to say the same thing I did twice now. <laughs> They're going to point this out, right? That it's been a really difficult time, but that he's leaning on the support of his family, his wife, who is actually expecting their seventh child this fall. Man, my heart just goes out to the family now without their mother, without the wife. Uh, it's just horrific. Wait, breaking news. Brianna Keeler is, actually has a heart. At least that's what she's saying. She's not a ghoul. She's not some corpse just sitting there like a dead fish. She actually has a heart and a pulse. I mean, that's what she's saying. I, I can't verify it, but the story is now that Brianna Keeler actually does have a heart. Chloe, thank you for that, for that interview. So here's the thing. Him fake crying about this woman, there's just no reason for that to happen. Right? He's on a CNN interview, and it's good for him to show emotion. But we know he's concerned about his employment. He's lost five jobs. He just got fired from another one, and his reputation has been besmirched. That's why he's now done uh, four hours of interviews <laughs> and posted lots of things on Instagram. He's hired a private investigator not to. And the only reason for that isn't because he's so concerned about the family and the you know loss of this this woman's life. He's doing that to clear his name, right? Everything about this is to clear his name. So he cares about himself. He's really narcissistic. Anybody can see it. And so his main objective is to clear his name. But, you know, anybody watching this knows that, and him fake crying just makes it worse. And throwing the two other people under the bus makes it worse because he was the producer. And one of the things he railed against Trump was Trump's inability to lead and Trump putting himself in front of his followers and Trump throwing his, you know, people like Cohen and uh, sloppy Steve Bannon and all these people thro uh, that Trump threw under the bus, right? Trump has just thrown one person in his life under the bus after another. And that's true. That's not, you know, that's accurate. Trump is somebody who's disloyal. But Alec Baldwin's throwing all these people under the bus. And he was the leader. He was a producer and the biggest star. And he's the big name out there. He's the big fish. And so, you know, stop whining about this thing and just take responsibility for this career-ending incident. Because... Because he was already in B and C movie land, right? He was he was long past even being on TV shows.
Like he was done. He was like the last best thing he did was his crappy Trump impersonation on the unfunny and dying Saturday Night Live. The guy hasn't done anything but B and C level movies. And now he isn't even going to get those, right? It's over. Just, you know, just relax. It's over. <laughs> you know, stop being so freaking desperate. Okay, so I want to get to the big one. I had some big one, uh, Khloe Kardashian thing to get to, a Kim Kardashian thing. Maybe I'll skip that and do that tomorrow. But I want to get to the big one thing and maybe a few other little things here. But first I want to do a little bit of a commentary. So this is from my video yesterday entitled, Finally Someone Admits to It, Plus Alec Explains It All. I misspelled explains it. it. <laughs> Looking at the title, I see I, 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 I misspelled both explains, which is maybe a little bit under, uh, understandable, but then I misspelled it. And then Brittany and Madam Expiration Date. And so in the beginning of the video, I give this boundary this i've been watching the journey series videos there was a scam run through the heartfulness organization brighter mind scam and this is no this is not the opportunity for you guys to say it's a cult all these guys i mean just you know it's just not appropriate right all you people who didn't like heartfulness before and don't like that i do it or whatever it is right there's no reason to comment any christian saying oh jesus is the only way no reason to say any of those things right I understand what you believe. It's not appropriate. It's just inappropriate for you to say something about this here. This is me uh, telling the people who watch the Journey series why I haven't posted. And in a surprise to no one, even after that very clear boundary, <laughs> after I spelled it out as clear as I possibly could, there were a number of comments like this. Hey, Paul, Jesus is the only way. There's no other way. Prayer hands. <laughs> and this is what I'm talking about, right? There's no one that's going to hear that that's going to think more fondly of Christians. And again, I don't blame one, you know, everybody in a group for the behavior of one person, right? I don't, you know, or multiple people. Like the group is the group. And like I've said before, pretty much every group especially spiritual groups, but also could be any other group, there's going to be people like me. There's going to be people with my personality type. And then there's going to be people like every other person in every other group, right? I mean, the demographics and the personality types are there in every group. But those of you who say things like this and think you've rocked it, right? Those of you who keep on po pointing out John 3.16, we know you believe because of your Bible that Jesus is the only path to God. And the rest of us don't believe that. And many of us have experienced divinity either on our own or through other organizations and other, uh, you know, various other religions or whatever it might be. It's just because you grew up in this religion. If you grew up in, in Islam, you'd say the same thing about that. If you grew up in Hinduism or as an atheist, you would say the same thing. It's what you've been indoctrinated with and you can't seem to, you know, understand that there are reasons why they would say something like that in your religion is to control you. Of course, they're going to tell you it's the only path and scare you that you're going to go to hell if you deviate from that path, right? That's how they control people, through threats and bribes and intimidation. And when you say things like that, it just, it gives Christianity and Jesus a bad name. It just bums people out, right? I keep on telling you that, you don't get it. It doesn't help you out. It doesn't help people's view of your religion and the people do it as favorable. It doesn't work. Maybe to the rest of the people who already believe that, but you already believe it, so you need, don't need to say it out loud. Or do you have some inner doubt that you have to keep on saying it because you don't really truly believe it? Whatever the case is, when somebody says, don't say that because this isn't about you, and you say it anyway, right? <laughs> And it isn't like I haven't heard it like 10,000 times on my YouTube channel and maybe even more in terms of comments that have said this in one way or another. You're not getting it. Great. Believe what you're going to believe, but don't like force it on other people because it backfires and then they resist even having a positive attitude about whatever you're doing. You can't force it. 
And as far as I'm concerned, the reason I'm bummed about heartfulness is it's just beginning to become like real religion. It's in the infant stages of becoming like a religion. And maybe it can be turned around, maybe it can't. But, you know, it's still in the early stages, right? You know, like Kamlish Daji is like Peter in the terms of the, you know, like the disciple, Jesus' disciple Peter. Like that's his, where it starts to become a religion. That's where we are in the heartfulness history books right now. And so I don't want to get something that's already done many worse things. Like this is the first scam I'm hearing about from heartfulness. We know that there's been wars created and the Crusades and all these religious wars and all the other things that have happened, evil stuff that is a part of religion. And heartfulness is now just dipping its toe into that, which is a complete bummer to me. So I don't want to go to something that's fully submerged and, you know, down the rabbit hole, right? <laughs> like, I, you know, I'm, I'm bummed that heartfulness is starting to become a religion like Christianity or Hinduism or all these other religions, right? I mean, that's, that's why I'm bummed. It's not that I want to now go do a religion that I left because I had something better and now it's going in the same direction as the thing that I left, right? I mean, <laughs> anyways, let's get on to the big one here. So here's the Khloe Kardashian thing. Rob Kardashian, he could also be called the big one, calls Sister Chloe his pretty princess sparkly girl. Um, Rob, do you know about this? So, you know, I, you guys make fun of me for having a bigger vagina than most. But anyways, um, <laughs> is there anything you want to tell us, Rob? Because that just sounds really creepy. My pretty princess sparkly girl. Um, there she is laying amongst a bunch of jeans and doing what Kardashians do. Anyways, I had a bunch of other things to get to, but um, this is a long video and I'm tired and it's running kind of late. But I'll, you know, tomorrow's another day. Only spirituality will save this world. It's Paramano, definitely pointing for the apocalypse and the ascension. Everyone have a blessed day and be grateful.